Hi, my name is James D'Souza and I'm a psychology teacher. And my name is Valen Van Horst and I'm a brand strategist. Every week we go on tangents, exploring and answering one of life's big questions. Our theme this season, season three, is career. And today's question is, our first external submission for this season is, is career a discovery or creation? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, is career a, a discovery question. or a creation? Uh, so that's interesting. I think we usually think of a, of a of career as a discovery in the case of what we usually call a vocation. So I think what's called a vocation is something that you're called to do, that you feel called to do. Ah, uh huh. Okay. Okay. So that you feel like this is this is the thing that I should be doing, I think. I'm not sure what the definition of vocation actually is right now. But it's, it's something that I think a vocation is something that you dedicate lifetime resources to. And I, I don't know if it's in the official definition, but I think we have a, a connotation mm -hmm. of the word and some sense in career, as, as the question points out, that maybe there's some part and if you think about the ikigai um like represented as a venn diagram there is one side which is what you're what you're good at um so in the difference between you know just what comes naturally or what's been nurtured mm -hmm. nature versus nurture i think like the discovery part is this idea that maybe the career is somewhere in you and you have to find it, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, and that I've might just, be, yeah. I've just got the meaning of vocation from Cambridge okay, cool. Dictionary. Great. A type of work that you feel you are suited to doing uh -huh. and to which you should give all your time and energy or the feeling that a type of work suits you in this way. So yeah, there is a, there is a feeling there, which is interesting. Oh, wow. It actually says in the example, mm -hmm. most teachers regard their profession as a vocation, not just a job. Yeah. Yeah. And usually what's considered as part of vocation are, uh, I think, job, like doctors or health practitioners, teachers. Uh, I'm not sure about lawyers, maybe. Or legal representatives. I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe somebody like a judge will be a vocation. Maybe. Someone who's interpreting the law at a high level. Hmm. Perhaps. So, you, so you, I you mean, the short, the short answer guy. is I think it's some of both, and it depends on for whom. Yeah. For me, it's I, I found it to be a lot more of a creation. And last time, last episode, I really got into detail about my own and both our careers, but well, I mean, particularly me, really. Um, or I spent more time speaking than you did about things. Um, so I would that's encourage you to go check you're out way the more last interesting. episode. Well, I, I would disagree with that. I don't think I'm way more interesting. As I had, I can go on for a while, and I do have a lot of things to say about my career. Uh, you could go on for a while about yours. You could like it doesn't. That's true. The fact that you've been a teacher for 18 years makes it that you have reached a level of experience and mastery that I haven't. Um, in a in in staying in a single job because you've been a teacher for 18 years but you also stated how many schools have you worked at two yeah so that's that you stayed for a long time you know your work environment your colleagues extremely well in a way that i i, mean, I haven't I moved, I moved around a lot so uh, the short the shorthand answer is i think it's a bit of both yeah that will dig in of course but the shorthand yeah. answer is as it depends for whom some people it's more of a discovery some people it's more of a creation I think mine was more of a creation. And at the same time, when I found out about my current job, it just felt like, ooh, this is this is the thing. So I, I did feel like a feeling that that was, that was right for me. Uh, now, I could have had that feeling about another job. I think it's probably not the only one. But I definitely, when I found out about it, I was like, this is me. This is, this is what I want to do. So I felt so there was a, a match. discovery. You felt settled. You felt like, ah, oh, this is it. Before getting it, just finding out about it and meeting somebody who did it um yeah now when i did the job it was uh, a bit different but like the experience of finding out about the job 
finding out about like the work of strategic planners uh, in in communications and advertising, particularly mm-hmm. in marketing, um, I, and meeting somebody who did it and what they said and how they described what the job was. And I, I really felt called like, that felt like a discovery. That felt like, wow, this is something I discovered. And I was out to discover something. I was looking for what would be the right mm. role in this industry. So if I want to go back working in marketing communications, where should I go? What 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 direction? What's right for me? So I was looking. Uh, and I guess what, what you, it depends how much you create, but it's both because you have to put some intention. And I think the side of the creation, there is some intention that just doesn't fall on your lap. So yeah, it's not just going to happen. Yeah, it's not just going to happen. I mean, it might, but in which case, it's just something that happens to you. I don't think it's either a discovery or a creation. Um, so, so I think both of those sides of the question, you're already taking for granted that you are looking for something or that you're putting some action towards having a career and building a career rather than mm-hmm. just, you know, I need some money and I walked out. I gave my CV and I got the first job that came, which happens a lot as well, out of just need, just the need to make money and or opportunity, a lack thereof, depending on the circumstances. Mm. Way back in my mid 20s, I do remember saying that was about the time where I said I wanted to change careers to become a teacher. And I do remember people saying to me, wow, that's really cool. Go for it. And then and then people would occasionally say, I wish I could do that. And mm-hmm. I would say, well, why don't you? Yeah. And they, and then they would say, oh, well, I'm doing this. Like, I, I, it just happened. I fell into this career. I fell into this job. And now I've been doing it for like five, four, five years. I don't want to change. And there's that kind of resistance to engaging in discovery or engaging in creation. Yeah. People just apply it's, maybe takes, out of need. It takes a big risk that a lot of people are, not willing or scared to take until well either never or a a point in their life where they just had enough and they can't take it anymore yeah uh and they burn out or they you know just either get depressed or do something that that finally they leave but that's often when you hear about this kind of i guess midlife midlife crisis sort of (laughs) or mid-career crisis i don't know if it's that's an actual term that's used but you could easily use it uh, and I think there's been a lot of that in the past year, and there's still news of, you know, a lot of the, I think I saw that in a title, the great resignation of a lot of people not coming oh, wow. back to work in the States uh, because they finally, for the first time, had an opportunity to stop and think about what they're doing and to maybe to, to look for something else. Not mm-hmm. everybody had that opportunity, but suddenly a bunch of people did. Thanks mm-hmm. to... Well, the, the the forced stop for a lot of people, and of course, I'm not talking about the health practitioners because they just were in overdrive last year, um, possibly still now, depending. But I mean, I'm, I mean, the, the the worst of it in the spring of last year, the, the pandemic. Mm. Um, and meanwhile, a bunch of other people were stuck at home and suddenly had time to think about what they were doing for the first time. And or perhaps depending on the country you're in, had help, financial mm-hmm. support. Uh, now, a lot of people possibly burn through that very quickly, but I also gave an opportunity to a few others to say, well, I don't want to go back to the minimum wage job that I had before. I want to find yeah. something else. Mm-hmm. Um, possibly train, possibly find another opportunity. So um, what was I saying before? Uh, so yeah, so is it a discovery or creation? So I think you actually just, the, just 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 to, to ask yourself the question, and yeah. obviously what we're discovering what we're discussing right now is already a privilege. Yes, yes. Because the vast majority of some... people don't have the opportunity to wonder and think whether they wanted if they were going to discover or create their career. They just have to go and get money. And yeah. and more often than not, even if you did have the privilege of having some time to think about it still a lot of people are like the person you just described and fall into a particular job and think it's not possible to change it like you did so even though you usually say that you know my career is more boring than you which i don't agree with 
um, you had the courage to say, actually, I, I, this is not it. And I want to go and do something else. Mm -hmm. uh, now, and I think it's a minority of people that, that take that kind of step. And that kind of step can either be, I think it's more of a creation to do that. There might be discovery attached to it. And I think there's certainly an overlapping kind of Venn diagram between the discovery and the creation. So like, so looking back at how, when I found out about, about strategy, mm. it felt like a discovery, but then following the discovery, I had to create and figure out how it was going to become one for real. Yeah. That was a lot yeah. more of a creation. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you know, you should go back and watch episode season three, episode two, because what Willem says about that process of creation, I think is so useful. So, so useful and so powerful. About my career, but, you mean? Yeah. 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 How you created yeah. that, that step and movement to from one career to another or one job to another. And, yeah. and that sense of creation came across in episode two. The, I like the way you're saying about the Venn diagram of discovery and creation. I do want to go back to something you started to talk about earlier, but never quite sure. completed, which, okay. which is Ikigai. Yes. You mentioned the Ikigai. Yeah, maybe we should just do... So we've talked about this before, but maybe it's just we for have. anybody who doesn't know the principle. Uh, it, and it's very much talked about in like, if you start reading blogs about career or career coaches, you will, or, or just anything about life, you'll find that concept of Ikigai a lot. It was super popular yeah. and it's still popular, very popular. You'll find 10,000, like loads of uh, websites and stuff about it. But it's a... Like a lot of popular work concepts, it's a Japanese word, um, and this is not specifically work, but it's the it translates as a life well lived. What what is it to have a life well lived, uh, mm -hmm. or a good life, or something like that? I think life or fulfilled fulfilled life, life well lived is, is the idea. That's ikigai. If you if you reach ikigai, you've had a life well lived. And there's a if you do a Google image search, you'll find one of the most popular ways. And, and I wonder how this is defined in Japanese because like the, I, I don't yeah. think it was defined with the Venn diagram in the first place, but now you do have a Venn diagram <laughs> with four, three or four, but usually four uh, concentric, well, so four circles tied. So one is what you're good at. Uh, mm. So, and, and it's usually used as a, as a proxy for career or work, right? Finding the right job mm. uh, or activity. Um, so what you're good at, uh, what's good for the world, what you enjoy and what makes money or like allows you to live in some way, but usually mm. it's you know, the way the worth the world we were, we live in is kind of money. Um, so, and then at, at the, and I can't remember what the intermediate points are. Yeah, those I, intermediate I, I've got points, it. Oh, you have it in front of you. I got it in front of you. And then of course so the, 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 the mix of the four together is a good guy. And then yeah. there's other things that are like a vocation, a job, but what, are, what do you yeah. have? At I'll go, I'll go through them. So, yeah. so the, the intersection of what you love and what the world needs is defined as mission. Right. The intersection of what can be paid for and what the world needs. So what, what can make you money and what the world needs is defined as vocation. The intersection of what we're good at and what can be paid for is our profession. The intersection of what we're good at and what we love is our passion. And the intersection of all four is Ikigai. Yeah. So Makes it's a, I think, I think it's a useful concept. And I think that it's, and the reason I think it's useful is that it forces us to actually do the, one of the things that we always talk about, which is learn more about yourself and what you're interested in, what you're good at, and yeah. and either go do stuff to discover what it is, yeah. or because for me with the teaching thing, it was literally I saw an advert advertising. This just and it, I can't believe I'm saying this, but because it feels a bit <laughs> cringy. I saw an advert about teaching on TV. I saw it on the tube. I was like, hmm, let me go see what teaching is really like. And I went and spent a day in a school and I really liked it. And that was it. I was Wait, like, how did you go teacher. through that? Because that's interesting. I think it's really interesting to think like, okay, well, what is it? What is being a teacher like? But how did you find out or how did you get to spend a day in a classroom? That's kind of random. Yeah. So it was an advert on TV with a website. And okay. then I saw, I saw, I kept seeing the poster on the yeah. tube Yeah. Uh, with a website. So I went to the website. I don't know. I can't remember what it was. 
because it's changed and there's loads of more routes. It doesn't really matter. And uh, I went to the website and I was like, yeah, okay. So what you have to do is approach a school and spend a day in the school and see if you like it. Okay. So I wrote to a school. It was a girl's school. And I went in and the guy, the guy who was like, I was shadowing was actually brilliant. And he, the, the thing that struck me, this is coming back to me now, is that as he was walking around, pupils were saying, hi, sir. Good morning, sir. I was like, wow. I don't remember that happening when I was at school. It was a genuine kind of relationship. And of course, fast forward nearly 20 years, that happens to me. I'm walking, walking through school. Hi, sir. Good morning, sir. And, uh, you know, the, my current favorite thing is one, of my, one pupil who I don't even teach has read Dune. So every time I go past him, I say, uh, fear, is, fear is the mind killer. No, is that it? Yeah, fear is, is the, the mind killer. Listening, fear is the mind killer. Yeah, I don't the, know the whole, whole thing by heart, to be honest. But yeah, I, I did know the before. whole thing by heart. And, yeah, and, he, and so it, it was that kind of connection as I was watching this teacher that made me go, oh, that's cool. The other thing that happened is that one of my friends from secondary school, mm-hmm. who I'm still in touch with, actually, his mum was a teacher. And she was a primary school teacher. So it was really easy for me to use that kind of connection to go and spend a day in a primary school. Right. And that was also really eye-opening the, because I, I had no intention of being a primary school teacher. But spending a day listening and watching and observing that, like, uh, okay, do I really want to do this? And I did. And that was it. I'm going to go be a teacher. Yeah. So did it feel, did, did it occur like a discovery or creation or something else? I, th- I think that was much more of a creation than yeah. a discovery. Because okay. I, I, I had the idea, then I went and found out about it. Because I, I, I could have quite easily spent a day in school and been like, nah, I don't want to do this. Yeah, but it, the, it, what's interesting in your story is that it feels, or at least that's how I listen to it, it feels similar to what I just described. And yeah. there's also something really interesting because it's also related to my job. The ad made you discover it. If you didn't yeah, see the did. ad, you wouldn't have it like did. the opportunity to create your career in it. That's true. That is so true. So the ad did its job, which is super interesting to hear somebody say, well, actually, I was influenced by the advertising and I acted on it. And I, I said this in episode two, season three, episode two, I'd reached a point in my job yes. where... I was questioning what marketing and advertising and media planning was. So, and you mentioned this earlier about there isn't, there's usually some kind of intention or drive or circumstance that has us question something. Yeah. And then, you know, a bit like hero's journey, I suppose we hear the call, do we answer the call or not? Yeah. So it's a, there is an element of that. Are you willing to look? Are you looking? Are you? Yeah. And maybe you are, maybe you're not. But I think the people who watch and engage and listen to us, I, I mean, hopefully, yeah. they're I, the people I, it, who are... Involved. If you think about discovery, you, you have to... Um, it, what's the definition? Because it's like something about learning and discovering as well. Discovering is, is finding out something that you didn't know about, right? I'm going to look it up. Finding Great. out about something you didn't know about. Well, discovery, the process, well, they, I mean, here it is. This is from the Cambridge Dictionary again. The process of finding information, a place or an object, especially for the first time, or the thing that is found. Yeah. The discovery of electricity. Yeah. A so, journey so or voyage of discovery. You necessarily have discovery unless you're already set on what career you want. Out of what you heard, what have you learned? What you learned? Because there's a and this reaches back to the video of Yo, Yuval Noah Harari that we shared, and that is a lot mm-hmm. of the talk going on right now, which is to say that there's a lot of jobs that don't exist yet that are going to be that if you're studying now, if you're, you know, a teenager like your pupils or a little bit older like one of my one of my students, it's entirely possible that you can look at doing jobs and developing a career in something that didn't exist ten years ago. So but regardless, even if you are doing something that existed 10 years ago, there is a process in, in, in your studies, which is part of the idea of, discover, of, find, of developing or finding a career, 
which is based on, well, I want to find out what's possible and what's possible is going to give me ideas about what I want. So it's, See, it's never a full circle on everything. It's never uh, completely on one or the other. No, what were you going to say? Yeah, I, that's what I was going to say. And, yeah. and what you just described, I think what you did, you were always looking for what's possible. What is this? That yeah. idea of questioning and searching. And of, and what's possible finding. based on my current circumstances, of course. Yeah. And, yeah. and wanting to do other stuff. But so just like anybody, if you, you know, well, it's, well look at the students that I was teaching last year. Mm. Uh, they go on internships and they are, they have, they seem to have um, narrowed down the fields of what they could be doing as careers to one around marketing communications. So they're mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm interested in this general, I've narrowed things down. I don't want to be a lawyer, I don't think, uh, for example. Yep. Um, but now what's possible in this area, and that's what they're finding out about, and you know, their future careers are, are likely to be based on what they're doing now, what they're interested in, but of course also what opportunities show up when they're looking for a job. So- This is know. really good, because I, 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 I'm reminded, of my sister who yeah. tried lots of things, did a graphic design degree. Mm. Uh, actually, before she did a graphic design degree, she trained as a chef, didn't like it really hard, did a graphic design degree on the strength of, got in on the course on the strength of the portfolio, didn't really like it after she graduated, then didn't really know what she wanted to do. Had like loads of crappy jobs. She always will talk about how data entry is like the worst job she could ever do. She hated it hated it and she somehow got a job helping out with a at a nursery that had a, a high percentage of people who didn't speak english mm. and then she got a, from that she managed to get a job as a learning assistant learning support assistant in a school with children with special needs special educational needs and then a bit like you were saying when you found out about strategic planning she found out about occupational therapy and now she's been doing pediatric occupational therapy for like over 10 years hmm. but it was th that moment of finding and the, the thing is she was under a lot of pressure from my parents right. you need to do this you should do that she was getting a ton of advice but she never had any space to explore for herself yeah and she was driven by pressure external pressure which happens a lot only, that's yeah quite... it does and that's that's kind of what i'm saying it this but once she found what she found, and she was in a, she would have been in her mid twenties, late maybe late twenties. So she went back to university, hmm. training as an occupational therapist. That's great. And yeah, and it's and she's so amazing at what she does. She's so amazing at what she does. Yeah. But that took a long time to get to. So yes. I think the other reason I'm saying that is because nobody has all the right answers instantaneously. And yeah, I, I think it, it be, it's funny. I just listened to a great episode of the Hidden Brain podcast, which is a great mm -hmm. podcast. I recommend it. Um, and this was about uh, the whole episode was about being kind to yourself. Uh, with wow. the psychologist, yes. with the psychologist about like the um, well, how natural it is to beat yourself up, generally mm -hmm. speaking. That that we we tend to always be a lot more, a lot harsher and more critical towards ourselves than we are to others. Uh, and how destructive it can be. Mm. Uh, one of the practices they recommend, it's a good episode. I, I highly, I recommend listening to it regardless. So we'll post it in the, in the, in the show notes. Uh, but you could just go on the Hidden Brain website and it's, uh, the Hidden Brain podcast and it'll be one of the recent episodes. Um, and uh, they recommended one of the exercises to, to think of, to, if you think about a good friend of yours, what would they say to you? you or you yeah, can even ask. I've had that. Yeah, but that's, that. that's an interesting one um, as a slight side note, but um, no, I don't, I'm like losing my thread of thought very quickly. What was I, was I, about, <laughs> I was talking about, I was talking about my sister and, and then yes. knowing what you want to do. Yes. And then you were saying being hard on yourself is really easy. Oh yes, because that prevents you from having, giving yourself the space to say, to either yeah. have made mistakes or not mistakes, but just like taking what was there as an opportunity because you needed to, or because you had pressures from your parents or other people, or just yourself, because the pressure sometimes comes from yourself that you should have figured things out. And uh, sometimes you don't have the luxury of waiting a little bit. So looking back and deciding and taking the risk to change things 
is, uh, well, it takes courage. Yeah. And it also takes a certain amount of just like saying and accepting that you did the best you could with what you had at the time or whenever you mm. got into it or that you're doing the best mm. you can now. And actually, if you're listening to this and to us and to or having this kind of conversation that we have with a friend of yours or someone, hopefully that you have in your life. Uh, and this is some actually this is also something that you just as you said earlier that we that we don't do enough in general, which is just to listen mm. and to give space to others. We jump at giving advice. We, I say we human beings in general. Uh, we tend to jump at giving advice if somebody like, let's say, you know, you're looking at what career or what um, internship you should be taking or how to do it, which direction to go in. We tend to ask for and jump at advice, at giving advice, uh, which might even add to the kind of pressure that we're talking about, rather than sometimes just asking a few questions and having the conversation based on that. So next, what I mean by that specifically, or just like um, uh, to be, uh, to, to illustrate the point, if you are next talking to a friend of yours in the same way we're talking now and talking about career options, then maybe ask a couple of questions and listen rather than jumping at mm -hmm. how, what mm -hmm. the other person should be doing mm -hmm. as advice. Um, because most of the time, and I think we said this before, when you give advice or when you think, when you say how somebody should be doing or shouldn't be doing something, you're really basing it on yourself because you only have your yeah. experience of what you think should be done. Yeah. So what you're saying is this is how I would do it. Sometimes you even literally say, this is what I would do when you give advice. Now it's sometimes it can be useful, but he still has no idea whether that is right for the other person. And which is also a funny one, when I hear from somebody else, even somebody that I care for, like that, I, that I'm that i asking the advice of, like you, let's say, a yeah. good friend. And if you told me like, this is what I would do, I would listen to it carefully. It'd be difficult to not want to do that or to say, now I, I'm used to it now, but like uh, 20 years ago, it was not that obvious to say, actually, that is great for you. That is not the right thing for me. That's a difficult one to think. Yeah, yeah. Particularly and particularly on the career side, you don't know until you go for it. And you usually, and I've, we've said this before, in other, I've said this before in other episodes, we don't, some, some people will get multiple options and it's great. You have like several things to choose from, but most of the time you have one offer at a time for a job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you might have the chance of like opening the panel of what you're discovering by looking at a lot of things, by having a lot of conversations, by looking up a lot of businesses. But even then, like looking at a website and a job description rarely tells you what the day to day actually is going to be. That's one thing. Uh, 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 yes. I think there are, there are categories of what might be usually considered a vocation where it's a little bit clearer. So being a teacher might give you a good idea of how it is. But then again, it changes what topic you're teaching, what kind of school you're at, what kind of age group that changes the whole ballgame. Mm -hmm. um, whereas the kind of careers where I'm working now in communications, I discovered that it's very difficult to figure out what you're going to be doing when you look at the website. And usually the website is very nebulous as to what this company actually does for money. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, and on jobs, it's interesting on jobs that didn't exist before. So I'm thinking of a student from last year who uh, she took an internship because, well, that was the one that was on offer. So she took it. And this is exactly mm -hmm. the kind of job that didn't exist a while back. A similar type mm -hmm. of job existed, which was working on the team of a, a YouTube influencer. So the dude made YouTube videos and it was a, a wow. small business because he had a whole audience. And so he had a, a crew of a few people, not many, just about a few interns doing the work of, you know, updating social media, booking guests, et cetera, all that stuff, just organizing. So what Venom is saying is that we're looking for an intern who can <laughs> post all our, edit all our videos. For in, France, on media. That's, in France, it's a paid position. So it's what we're really looking <laughs> Is it really? For. yeah. You get you, yeah, yeah. You have to, yeah. It's like, we, we can afford to pay you. We're looking nothing. for an informal, <laughs> informal. Uh, if you want to, if you want to grow our numbers, if you're one of those, one of those pupils or students that keep saying you know, you're going to make tons of money by being an influencer on YouTube or podcast and you know how to do it and grow the numbers and get us contracts that are going to get us all the money, just please just apply and help us do that. Or if you're not doing it already, then start and realize how difficult it actually is. Yeah. Yeah, I have anyway. that same student who says, oh, I'm TikTok famous. Is he? But, yeah, no. 
Well, he says he is, but I don't know. I don't have TikTok because I know if I downloaded it, I would, I would just, I would not do anything. Although I'm on holidays now, and I know this dates the podcast. I've got half time holiday. I'll send you a. Uh, I watched a video. So last week that was another interesting one. So one of the classes I teach is called Digital Brand Environment. Okay. Cool. Okay. And uh, which is a cool class. So, but last year, other teacher friends, maybe you've said that as well told me that there's going to be great. You should teach again and the same classes. So uh, you, you said this in episode so that, uh, two. Oh, I, I did say that. Sorry, I'm repeating <laughs> yeah. myself. Um, That's okay. <laughs> but, uh, It'll be easy. You have all the resources. Yes. But, but no. I really, digital brand environment, digital, if I want to do my job well, it changes every three months. So yeah. suddenly last class, I was like, wait a minute, I need to talk about everything going on with Facebook. Yeah. Uh, and at the same time, I wanted to talk about, uh, the class was about algorithms in general for social media. Uh, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a great video about the TikTok algorithm on the Wall Street Journal and YouTube, so I'll send it over to you, and I'll put it in the show notes as well. It's a it's an interesting piece of research, and there was also a great podcast episode about the TikTok algorithm. What's interesting in those kinds of research is that it's all speculative. We're speculating how the algorithm works. We don't really know. You have yeah. ideas in some sense because they announce things, and then the Wall Street Journal ran this whole piece of research where they created bots, a hundred of them and observed what behavior they were doing but that was it was extremely um i feel like i've read that maybe i didn't maybe, but please send it I, I wonder if i've I've talked about it last time you might have i, I the, might have i might be repeating myself so. or because for anybody because who watched so a bunch of our episodes you, you know we're, we're revolving around the same kinds of topics was, yeah anyway. because because we're this very similar the same kind of things would appear in our feeds probably it's possible. Well, this pieces. one I went to look for it because I was preparing for that class. Ah, uh, um, oh, okay. But yeah, I don't spend a lot of time on TikTok either. It's just the whole thing is designed to be extremely, extremely addictive, addictive. and to have yeah. hours disappear where you're like, "What did I just do for the last three hours?" I was. That's exactly like, what mm -hmm. happened to my wife. Was, and not to say that there's up. there's really creative stuff, but there's also oh, she got in, she got into TikTok. Yeah, and then she took it off because she was like, "What am I doing?" Mm -hmm. I, two hours have gone and that's <clears throat> but it's the to bring it back to the question yes. the idea of jobs not existing and we don't know what jobs are going to exist yeah like tiktok algorithm wrangler <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. a job that didn't exist before the, <clears throat> the I mean, phrase arguably you could say a programmer used to exist or or tiktok influencer is something that you could hope for as a career now or yeah. social media influencer so the um the thing that frightens me is or the, or the, and the quote that always frightens me, and I'm not exaggerating when I say frightened, is from Yuval Noah Harari. The phrase that stuck with me is cognitive structures will melt. And I, I don't remember that phrase, okay. Yeah, it's in the context of the speed of change the, about, and he's talking about education. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I, I feel that's particularly relevant to me as a teacher. And mm -hmm. I get asked for advice from students i'm currently teasing a bunch of students by saying that they are like me and they go no i don't want to be like you we wrote an essay in class together as part of a part of me getting getting to practice writing essays and one of them i could see his face cringe because he came to the same conclusion in his essay that i did when i wrote it in <laughs> real time and on the one hand, I'm saying to them, like, uh, you're, you're being like me. He's like, no, I'm like the best version of you. This has become an ongoing conversation. You're, I'm like the best version of you, sir. But the, they're in, the, and I say to them, you've got to walk your own path. You don't want to be like me. Go do your own thing. Go try a bunch of things and go mess them up and find your own way. And this, their younger people want to know an answer and I don't always give it to them. And I will always caveat by saying, yeah, me as the someone in their mid forties, this is what I think from yeah. my <clears throat> tiny little limited perspective, but you don't know until you go and discover something. But on the other hand, you can quite easily just make something up and go do it. Yeah. And I do tell them there's nothing stopping you going and being an influencer, going and starting your own business now, go do it. That's why well, I was going to say that I think there's a whole category that we should cover in answering the question where mm -hmm. a career is definitely created. And that's when you go and forge your own path, particularly if you're an independent or you create your own business, which and you know, 
being an influencer or like having video and living off of it is creating your own business. Mm -hmm. It is. Mm -hmm. It's if that, if you want to yeah. live off of it, uh, that some way, shape or form, it's creating a business. That's what it is. Um, and, and in which case, regardless of how much discovery. So I think the, 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 the structure that we were talking about, there's a relationship between the discovery and the creation for sure. So if you have the opportunity to then spending time looking at what's possible is a discovery phase. And that's natural as part of a career, I think, uh, or it's, mm -hmm. it's certainly possible. And then if you decide to go and forge your own path, that's definitely creation. So there's, you could say there's creation in the way that we described it so far, which is to say that once you know what you want to do, you have to put a lot of effort yeah. towards getting that to happen. Mm -hmm rewriting your CV, going on interviews, et cetera. So there's, there's certainly some creation to it, but there's clearly creation in the whole career when you decide to go and make your own path. You're not as part of a company, you're creating your own. So that means you're creating your own revenue streams from nothing, mm -hmm. uh, your own source of revenue from nothing. That's, <clears throat> that is clearly a creation. Yeah. <coughs> now... Um, something you mentioned yeah. about is you having your own business and by by business you mean solving someone's problem and getting paid for it yeah or exploiting some opportunity yeah i mean i and literally well, mean so that you actually have a diagram that i created for this and i wrote a post about what a business is so there's like the simplest level of, of a business is you're generating some kind of value mm -hmm. for a, somebody that wants it mm -hmm. And they're going to give you some other form of value in return, mm -hmm. typically money, so that then you will sustain yourself and have enough resource to create the next thing that is going to generate value. Whatever, that's the business. Uh, the simplest form. There's more complex forms, but overall, but at even its a core, more complex that's what form, every business is. Yeah, it's, at its core is whatever your business is. Even a more complex one, uh, well, the, the other idea that I think has been added by growth and, and um, the capitalist society that we live in is, which is also covered in Sapiens, we keep come running back to Yuval Noah Harari, but not necessarily in career, is the promise of value. So you're creating something with, for in, in, with the belief that in the future it's going to grow. So that's, for, for example, raising money for a startup business uh, through venture capitalists. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So you're not only selling the value now, you're selling the promise of players. This is going to be worth money, a lot more money later. So you should give, you should give me this much because in the future, it's going to be worth this much. Okay. Yep. So, but otherwise it's the same principle. You're exchanging one form of value for another. Hmm. Uh, the value might be bread for bakers. Cause that's the example I've used in the simple business. It's like the business has existed for hundreds of years in the, that form. Or you might say, well, actually, I'm, I'm not going to, what I'm selling you a, st a story in, or the, a fiction in the idea or the promise of value. Like you should invest in my bakery. Please give me thousands of pounds, dollars or euros. And in exchange, this is what I'm going to do. And what I'm selling to you is a story. The dream of it, the dream of the investment and mm -hmm. or the return on the investment as well. So anyway, all that said, if you go into creating your own business, then yeah, you, you're definitely creating because if because otherwise when you join a business as an employee, as an intern, et cetera, so you're learning a lot, but mm. that part of creating you, so you might be doing some creation in how you handle the job different than others, but the work itself and the, <clears throat> the career, well, actually it depends if you look at a job per job thing or at the whole career, the whole career, you might create it. Um, yeah, that, path, some question that, career to, path. The, that career path. But for each individual job, if you're an employee, there's some give and take as to how much you're given, uh, as in, you know, you're slotted into a company structure yeah. and you're being job told this is, this is what you got to yeah, do. Yeah, and you're just like, this is, your manager tells you how they want the work to be <clears> done. <throat> some of it, you're going to be autonomous. And the more you grow in your career, presumably the more autonomous or independent you're going to be in doing your job and then perhaps manage others to do it. Um, but your it's in the framework of the your employer which depending on the employer might have more or less structure if you work for a very big corporation they tend to have a lot of structure mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. usually that's an interesting one also and i think a little bit related or related enough for me to mention it 
<clears throat> students usually ask me what, what, which way they should go, what kind of job they should look for. And I usually come down to the main difference I can think about is the one between very large corporate structures and small businesses or startups. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, of course, there's a lot of others, but I think that that's, tends to be, it really depends on what's diff because it's difficult to say what you should be looking for. Um, and it's like advice, and this is goes back to what you were saying about your pupils want some form of answer, so they ask questions that have firm answers, which I don't yeah. have, because I'm like it's going to change from one business to the next. Now, mm -hmm. a large corporation is more likely to have more structure. Mm -hmm. You're more likely to be to be told this is how your work should be done, and mm -hmm. to have somebody who your your team you have a team of um, peers doing the same kind of job and a manager who's going to tell you how to do things possibly have more time for you as an intern or as a junior employee mm -hmm. um whereas but it's not necessarily the case at all it might not be true um so it's uh, I, everything i say has uh, has um, um a, a pinch of it's a, to, to be taken with a pinch of salt uh is that the right saying yeah I, I, yeah, yeah take it with a pinch of salt yeah uh or a small structure will tend to be more nimble uh, of course uh, you will tend to have a lot more variety of things to do because in a smaller structure people have roles but they work on a bunch of different things because everybody yeah, has to multiple pitch in. roles everybody just gets involved yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, and possibly a little bit more chaos because just <laughs> it's a small structure so everybody has to yeah. pitch in and you have to go with the flow of how things move and what happens but again it might not be true uh, or it, you might be in a structure if it's small then Others, you might have less time from people who know and how to manage things. Um, but it's, again, not true. What I usually say in terms of, and if it's a little bit, I don't know if it's repetitive compared to other things about finding internships and jobs, is that the questions you want to prepare are for the person that you're going to be working with. So ideally, in interviews, mm -hmm. you want to find out who you're going to be mm -hmm. spending a lot of time working for. And whether mm -hmm. that person can teach you a lot or not. And we've, we've talked about this in previous episodes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but, um, and that I think is part of discovery. That's the part where the career is a bit of discovery. Now, if we think mm -hmm. about the whole career path as a whole, there's definitely a part of discovery to come back to the question. And how much you want it to be creation is up to, up to you. I think there's a minority mm -hmm. of people. And I think there's more and more um, uh, awareness and there's talk in the media about more and more people going independent and being freelance. Yeah. And yep. having running their own thing. So yep. there's more and more awareness for the opportunity to be it's that it's possible to do your own thing. And mm -hmm. so there's probably more and more Well, there's more and more resources. So blog posts, videos, people who talk about it, just like us talk about what it is to go and create your own career. Uh, which a, a way back it didn't used to be po as as possible or the idea didn't seem to be possible for a lot of people there's I think also the fact that more and more young people are spending more time at their parents place till older makes it that maybe you would think that I can take the risk of creating my own business because I'm not going to kick hit that I don't have to pay rent yet um, so I think that possibly plays into uh, a an ability for more young people to spend more time looking and discovering what career they might want, as well mm -hmm. as creating it if that's what they choose to do. There's also another thought I had uh, on the conversation that we've been having when you were talking about your sister and even us, uh, yeah. which is I think that th there's also this idea of opportunity, which is very um, what we've talked about so far. It seems to be quite big population center and city dwellers perspective. Okay. Um, yeah. So we, on one hand, have more opportunities to explore more types of careers because all of them are on our doorstep. Uh, okay. Whereas if you're living in the countryside, you might have less opportunity for different kinds of businesses that are available around you. On the other hand, having the idea that, oh, I want to make wine or be a farmer might not happen as often if you live and grow up in the suburbs. You'd mm -hmm. have to go out of your way to find out that it's possible to have a career in forest management mm -hmm. um, or taking care of, well, taking care of animals. There's a little bit more stuff like that on TV. So you might have that idea. But whereas my nieces who grew up in a small village of, of winemakers, 
they may well very may have the idea of making wine. I mean, because well, I just have a, I'm an uncle again, and we just have a new niece, and my sister who makes wine has two daughters. Mm-hmm. So not to say that she will, she might not want to do that at all. She might just want to go to a big city and go study and live her life somewhere else, like a lot of people have. But that I that I wanted to underline the fact that what you might um, have ideas for and what you what might we might discover again is a matter of the opportunities you have, and that depends on also well what your parents tell you, or whoever raises you. Um, yeah. So it also no. sounds like you're saying our view is limited, and there's more than we might realize. Yeah. Based there's on the, the, what the we've elephant, been told, how we've been brought up. The elephant parable. Uh, what's that story? The Indian parable what? of the elephant. <laughs> and I heard it what's again, that? like recently. The one where the one where it's four old men looking that were four blind or three blind men touching something and one one says oh, well, yeah, they're, yeah. Touch, they're touching the trunk and they're like well this animal is like kind of a snake i think another one is touching the leg and they said no this is a tree trunk of some kind and another one touching whatever i can't remember what they say but the idea being that if you only have a partial view you can't see the full animal you can't describe it as an elephant yeah and yeah, we yeah. only ever have a partial view of everything typically and the more complex our world is becoming mm the more and which is very complex on one hand there's a lot of uh pull towards having simple answers because we want things to be simple and understandable but in reality the world is extremely complex and we've talked about Mm -hmm. that in other episodes and in 21 lessons for the 21st century Yuval Noah Harari which we keep quoting him like 10 times per episode it's crazy um it's ridiculous and I try to find other uh, well I mean I, I did I did mention hidden brain so that was different but um he talks about and he's not the only one to talk about this no, but it's fine. difference it's fine. between knowledge and power that you can't pursue both at the but same time I think equal it, values yeah so so you just mentioned knowledge versus power but you also mentioned you all know harari mm-hmm. this also might be a good point just to remind everybody he's one of our four sources yes. for this season Every, this season's theme of career is why Ooh. we're really looking at what we're looking at and Ivano Harari is one of those sources another one this question also of discovery versus creation career plays into another one of the sources which is British philosopher guy oh man the source is going out of my head what is it find your find what, what you're desiring what was his name oh uh, you talking about Alan, Alan Watts, Watts. Yeah. Alan Watts, that's what I was talking well, about. It's funny. I, well, I was just thinking of Tim Urban. So we'll talk about well, we'll talk about all of our references and sources to 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 before we well as we go on um closing for today. I think that's a good point. Yeah. So the other uh, it's worth we we only ever know uh and understanding of the world is only ever from our limited view. There's yeah. there's more we can there's always more to discover, there's more more to create and explore. And I think that you're, the idea of talking to other people and forming our own opinion and trying things out, I think is I think is really important. I think yeah. It's, so it's it's I, I recommend and I think so. And when you look at the other the long blog post in the Wait But Why uh, post, yeah. which is one of our other references for career, which strongly recommended, which is how yeah. to pick how to pick your career that's right for you, is the name of the post, and it's in the show notes. Uh, Mm -hmm. And if you go through that post, and I started going through the exercises, which I haven't finished, I've been super busy with work the last few weeks, so I might I might pick it up again, which will give me other ideas, perhaps for the next episode. Um, But what what you're doing there, the exercises are really about getting to know yourself, Mm -hmm. and getting to know yourself in a way that will allow you to have an eye open for discovering other types for for, for discovering careers. Mm -hmm. And it takes some looking. Uh, and I think that cycle of saying, well, you, you're going to discover and find out about what careers are possible get with whatever time or opportunity you have and carving out opportunity for that is a, I think is a good idea as much as you possibly can. Mm-hmm. And then once you settle on that, then there's creation as to, okay, now that I know which way I want to go, how am I going to get there? And that's devising a strategy as well. And I think there's something inherently creative in devising a strategy. And then, as we just were talking about, the level of creative, the level of creation, not creativity, like how much you create is well, one hundred percent if you're creating your own job, and then somewhere in between if you're if you're um, picking up some other jobs. 
because well just as you talk about uh, quite frequently or we've had to we had to talked about this before I would, and i like you talking about uh, this uh, this notion of intrapreneurship so intrapreneur you're somebody who makes things happen within a company yeah and for that there's creation going on you, you're creating new ways to do things within a given company uh, and that gives you a, an ability to create something on the career path on your career path and you have influence over what's happening um and in that's that, what's that yeah. has what's kept me going being in one place yeah. because i would get the question from pupils like how come you haven't started your own business mm. and how come you're not an entrepreneur if you're just talking about it i was like and i i spent so much time feeling insecure about that but then when i reflected back i realized there are opportunities to be to create something within the framework of where you're at but and and then that's actually been my a significant chunk of my career mm -hmm. uh, being creative within and creating something within the framework but it didn't exist yeah. like if i almost like and it goes back to this idea of we don't know what's going to exist what jobs are going to exist in the next 10 years yeah. if i had my time again i would go and do behavioral economics at uni but that didn't exist 25 years ago mm -hmm. it wasn't it wasn't a thing and that's only going to get faster and more interested well yeah. i say interesting maybe more challenging so the trying to and this is something i wanted to mention earlier and we, i mm -hmm. don't know if we've mentioned it in this episode yet but the we have mentioned about pressure but the on young people i think it's getting more and more and more young not so much younger but certainly by 16 17 18 in amongst the children that i'm teaching within the context of a a middle class suburban yeah, private school. Uh, I think you're right. I think we mentioned it before, not in this episode, but uh, having you're to being pick. asked to know, to figure yeah. out what you should want to do in which way your yeah. life should go earlier and earlier yeah. in life, which yeah. I had no um, idea. And it's really that's a lot of pressure. Yeah, I I think it's really scary, and the and which, I do hence, hence like, the yeah, hence the notion of self care and being kind to yourself and not beating yourself yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. how to deal with that kind of pressure when you're 15 is a big deal. It's, it's, particularly it's when you have you don't want to you, i mean i think you have a lot of other things to discover when you're 15 than figuring out what you're going to do with your life and i still don't know what i'm going to do with mine i mean i know i'm exactly <laughs> but, um, there's, and there's also sorry i don't know if you were finished with that thought before i wasn't i wasn't another. quite finished yeah, go ahead. The, so the sometimes it can be like i've heard students say to me oh if i do if i do it a business management or an accounting degree, then you know, I can become an accountant. What's the point in doing history uh, as a degree? What's the point in doing a geography degree? Yeah. And <laughs> students don't always see that. And, and again, this is something you've talked a lot about, the skills that you get from doing geography or the skills that you get from being at university can lead you in any number of directions. And it is a discovery and a creation of, my time at uni was so useful to me to be able to, discover what I was good at in a way and even though I was doing the same subject as a bunch of other people yeah and the that's that was I would, that was so so important for me yeah it was so important for that's me. why I tell my student that like I what I want you to get out of this class that I'm teaching is to think I want to enhance your ability to think about things and we have a very utilitarian view of, and I say we because the society is built like that. Yeah, yeah. For the kids to be asking, well, why, and I did the same. I'm like, well, I don't need math. Why, why do I need math? I'm not interested. It's difficult and it's not what I want to do. And like in the example of like, all right, I know which direction I want to go in. But what you don't know is that you might change your mind. Mm -hmm. What you don't know is you don't know if you're going to really like it or not. Mm hmm and you also don't know what you're going to be teaching. So, so the, the topics are not there for you to learn about geography, to be a geography teacher, but what it looks like this, because that's how school and how society is organized. It's like, oh yeah, I'm going to learn this thing. So I'm going to get into this career and it's a linear perspective on things. But what I, what I believe is the value, and we've talked about this before, so we're just going to repeat what you just said, is to expand your brain to learn more stuff to get to know yourself a little bit better and to have other things to draw on in terms of knowledge later in life, because you're not going to remember most of what you're learning at school. Anyway, what you're doing is just like, ideally just training your brain to be a little bit smarter and to open up I to did, a little bit, a few more things. That's what I you're remember doing a couple of years ago, 
saying to a student that it's my job to get you to think and she said to me no it's your job to get us to learn what we need to learn to pass the exam or something along those lines yeah and it's and I still teach her now and I, I think her opinion has changed and I, I quite facetiously, facetiously say it's my job to get you to think and then judge you that's my job yeah no 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 it's not yeah it is yeah it unfortunately it is and I, it's What's interesting I'm, I'm is that very... she, she's right in her assessment as well. She's correct. But yeah. that's a really, for me, that's a, the base view of what's expected. Yes. And it's not the ideal of what education should be. Yeah. In my view, and I think yours as well. I, I agree. It's, that, that is a low level way of thinking. And the thinking is, or how to think is difficult enough as it is. Yeah. And that's, kind of I mean that's why I like these conversations that's I think that's why that's why teaching tangents came into existence yeah. because we wanted to think and we wanted to explore and have answer answer some useful questions yes but expand, and I'm just reminded that the conversation. I appreciate the question that we've had today so please send us more and we should do this at the beginning of the episodes as well because the vast majority of people drop off after a few minutes so we should ask people to send questions at the beginning as well. But if you have questions about career, and in a few episodes, we'll announce what the next season's theme is gonna be probably, but any questions you have for us in general or about career, please hmm. send them to hello at jamesdesouza.com and it's in the show notes. Uh, That's right. As it's spelled. And uh, all right, how else do we close this episode? Because I'm at a loss right now, I'm sorry. Oh, you, oh I, can, episode, I can close it but, out, but the, yeah. the the other reason for emailing me questions, you. no, yeah. no, you didn't. That's fine. The other reason for emailing me is Venom doesn't know what the question is going to be, so it's really important. Yes, don't tell me what the question is. And the it's, I think the discovery versus creation is a is a really powerful theme and a really great way of looking at at career. It is it might sound like a cop out, but. It, today's today's question has been is discovery is career a discovery or a creation and Ooh, it might sound <laughs> it might sound like a bit of a cop-out to say it's both but it's an exploration that's what, that's what we said at the beginning but the, yeah. uh, one thing because we just we didn't mention our last reference uh this short short um documentary about one oh, of the, the sword. last traditional sword makers in japan but also as a parable for every kind of thing where you, 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 you develop a craft and over the course of a career, get better and better and better at it. And you keep working at it. Uh, and that's something that you can do for any type of career, I believe. And there's always new discoveries to be made, even if you've been doing the same thing for 30 years. And you see that very well in a little bit in this short documentary. But if you watch something else like Jiro um, Dreams of Sushi, another mm. documentary about a master while well, sushi maker, and they talk about like how you can hone your craft over the course of a lifetime. And there's always new learning uh, and new learning and new discoveries to be made, even if you're doing the same thing over and over and over again. And only through all that learning will you be able to, to create more as well throughout your career. So uh, I'm just repeating in a slightly different way what you said, but there, I think, a, a, and this brings, draws us back to Ikigai as well, that there's always a pursuit of um, there's a research that will draw in both discovery and creation to have a good career and a good career in that in the sense of Ikigai of just like being fulfilled and living a good life, mm. a life well lived. Um, Which yeah. you can so ideally also... you want to be looking for both or else you're probably yeah. if you're missing that, then you want to look for it because you're probably going to get bored or frustrated or if you don't have that discovery and creation as part of your job and part of your career, I think you'll, then you just have a job and you risk more going towards that kind of burnout um, frustration that we talked about at the beginning of the episode. And, but for that, burnout, it takes risk. Depression. You need to take yes. some risks. It does take guts. Yeah. So we're saying discovery, no, hang on. Career is a discovery and a creation. Yeah. That's what we're saying. Yeah. And it's like they go in a cycle somehow. There's a relationship. Oh, uh, you're doing it like that. I like to do it like the infinity symbol. Discovery, creation. Okay, cool. Great. That works. Thank you. Great. Thank See you. See you next time. See you next time.